Mr. President, we have you right here on the blue mark. All right. Madam Mayor, we have you right here on the green mark. Thank you, ma'am. And Mr. President, this is Ghassan Corban, the Executive Director of the Sewers and Water Board. And this is Ramsey Green, Deputy CAO of the City of New Orleans. How are you? You'll hear good. from both today. Ghassan, go good. ahead and take it away. Thank you, Christy. Mr. President, good afternoon. It's such an honor to have you here with us. It just, it's an amazing moment. I'm going to take a second just to cherish it. So thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you. Madam Mayor, thank you so much for being here. Sure. It's always good to see you. Thank you for your leadership, not only as the mayor, but also as the president of the, the utility and the board. So thank you so much for all your support with everything that we do. Again, Mr. President, it's just an honor. And I want to start by thanking you for selecting the Sewage and Water Board and the Curto Water Plant as a site to showcase and to, show, again, showcase your, your, um, your vision to the country and for sharing your um, passion about the water infrastructure. I've been in this business for about 30 years, and this is the first time I can truly say that you are the first president who highlighted and elevated the in water infrastructure front and center as an issue for the entire country. And on behalf of all the utilities, water utilities and across the nation, I thank you for that. I used to be a county councilman there, <laughs> and one of the first major issues we had was dealing with water overflows, not like you have here. Yes. But there was a lot of construction. We were the fastest growing city, county in the metropolitan nationally in, the, in 1970. And in 71, we had all these, all the construction overflow. We had to put in the tidal basin and the rest, and we had to put in a filtration facility. And it was a lot, a lot of work. Yes, absolutely. And it was way above my pay grade. <laughs> well, Mr. President, before we have a very exciting tour for you today, but before we start the tour, there are two unique facts about our city and about our system that I think are relevant for today's tour. And the first one is the fact that our city is divided by the Mississippi River. So we have two cities really as part of one, which, which results in requiring us to have two separate facilities for the same purpose, such as if water filtration, uh, uh, wastewater treatment and, and such, which adds a burden in terms of cost, ownership and, and maintenance. It's just a unique situation for you today like our, our, ourselves. The other unique fact about the city is that we live in a bowl and much of the city lives below sea level. And the re relevance of that and significance of that is the fact that every time it rains, every drop that rains on this, falls on the city must be actively pumped out. That's very significant for us as a utility because not only we provide drinking water and treat wastewater, but we're also responsible for the drainage as a utility. And we take that awesome responsibility very, very seriously. Much like you talked about flooding, our charge as a utility is to prevent flooding or minimize it at best. And we, ha we are challenged with the climate change and the enormity of, and the frequency of the rainfalls that, that we have been experiencing. We, we think that we will continue to experience. The site you're sitting on today is about 74 acres. It's average of 100 years old because parts of it is older than 100 and some of it is younger. It serves two purposes. Uh, providing drinking water for our community, and we also generate power. And the significance of generating power on this, on this site is the fact that only, not only it allows us to drive drinking water pumps that deliver water to the distribution system to deliver to people's homes, but it also, equally important, it allows us to drive the, all the, the pumps throughout the city, again, to pump the city dry and prevent it from, from flooding. So this is very crucial. Um, oh, that's over here. The, so the river is over there. We're standing in the middle of two processes here. This is the, the, ins the chlorination basin. Gotcha. So we introduce chlorine to this water and we force it to walk slowly through meanders through that basin. So it goes into this basin right here, which is the, yeah. the third gallery. And it goes through a media of gravel and sand and charcoal. And then it ends up with the end product, the, the final product. So. It's very, obviously very crucial step that we do. So there are three key steps to filtering water or providing good water to our city. We pump water from the, from the Mississippi. 
get it to this point, we filter it, we disinfect and disinfect it, and we get it to the pumping stations where the, pump, the pumps put, put it in the distribution system. Three key steps. You're gonna get a chance to see an active site where we show partnership with the federal government, with FEMA, improving the way we pump water into the distribution system. Again, very key step that we're doing very well at, and once the project is complete, we're gonna feel very good at that key step. But if we come back here, where things may look fairly nice on, on the surface, what lies beneath is a very antiquated and old system, yeah. and it has served yeah. its life. And every day that goes by, the risk of failure increases. The whole system should be replaced. The whole system could, could fail and render us dysfunctional in terms of providing drinking water. So that is very concerning for us, I would say for the mayor, because this is, I mean, as existential as, as, as it can be in terms of having a city yes. relying on us. We, we provide the water for the entire city of New Orleans. And we had to address a cross-connection issue yeah. several years ago, a couple, two years ago. Because what we found as we pushed our leadership to really explore, we found that the water we were using in terms of drinking was also cooling our turbines cross-connection. So we had to ensure, one, allocated resources there to deal with cross-connection, because drinking water is a, such a big vital yeah. component. You know that. Another, another concern of ours, Mr. President, we know what's coming around the corner in terms of higher standards for quality of water. And we know for a fact that without making significant improvements for how we purify water, that we will not be able to meet those standards. I mean, it's a, it's a given. You will render us useless in terms of providing our community with uh, drinking water. We are 100% supportive of the higher standards, but we are definitely um, challenged yeah. by the fact, how do we get, get ourselves to that, to that level? At the same time, as the rainfall and heat. I mean, I've been very deeply involved and we rejoined the Paris Climate Accord and just had a meeting with uh, 40 heads of state. And, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're talking about uh, sea levels rising, water levels rising. And uh, what would it take if you were, if you were starting, this an unfair question maybe, if you're starting from scratch, what would you be building here now? I what, would, what would be building a more modern filtration uh, um, facility for the next 50 to 75 years, yeah. utilizing the most up to, uh, modern uh, state-of-the-art technology that it will produce much better quality water right. and a higher standard, uh, such as all the emerging contaminants, contaminants that we need to capture that we are not able to capture with this current system. So this is, it's, it's, it's a wholesale Have refurbishment you ever, of this. Uh, Estimate the cost it would cost to do that, and how, would you, and how would you transition in the meantime? Absolutely. So I believe, I, I believe Gasson, that that Ramsey might have some good points on modernization. The reason I ask the question, line. yes, sir. I, I have this. What people don't quite understand is my infrastructure proposal is several trillion dollars. I mean, this is about modernizing our infrastructure to provide, people think, don't think of infrastructure as the water. Correct. If you don't have the water 10 years from now that is needed and the purity is needed, your whole city right. is, is in real trouble. And it's gonna affect everything from the health and the viability of the city. And so when I talk about the human cost of this, I think I have, some, I have trouble uh, convincing some of my friends on the other side of the aisle that this is, that infrastructure is all about making life livable for ordinary people. Yes. And this is the most basic thing. I've been focusing on dealing with, uh, for example, there's, as you know, 10 million homes of lead pipes still Absolutely. going. You got 400,000 schools and daycare centers and that still have lead pipes for feeding them. And uh, I know here in your city, like most, you've been able to get rid of the lead pipes up to the property line, but from the property line on, it's been, you haven't been able to do that. We could do that, and this proposal I have would allow you to be able to, with a 
80-20 match, be able to have every one of the homes that still have the pipe, lead pipe going from the street or the corner to their property done. And it creates thousands and thousands of jobs and generates economic growth. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we are 100 percent aligned with that priority and we're, you know, Before the president not all here, they, although they could hear it. The epiphany for me about water and being below sea level, etc., was when I brought my daughter down here as a freshman at Tulane University just before the massive Katrina. And I remember the last thing that, and Mayor Landry was mayor then, he's being very nice to me. And I remember him saying to me, he said, Now look, Joe. If there's ever any problem, your daughter can evacuate with me. And I'm thinking, what the hell is he talking about? And then they had a facility, they had all the parents come to the stage, the big auditorium, and they had someone, must have been from here, or I don't know where they're from, experts like y'all, come and explain that if you ever hear that there's a hurricane heading down here and your daughter says she's getting the plane and flying somewhere, just He's give her the money, there. I think we're just get out of town. And, and when okay. Katrina hit, right. we were down here yeah. and afterwards, and try to help. Okay. I mean, it was, it, it just blew my mind how, how consequential what you have to do here is. And one of the reasons for this, and I'm not trying to sell you on anything, <laughs> but one of the things is that I'd like you to think about for me, if you had a wish list, out of me today. What would it be? A trillion dollars. Because it will create an enormous number of jobs, solidify the security and safety of the American people on a whole range of areas from bridges to, to water, and put us into a different category than we are now. We're we're so far behind the eight ball in terms of having a modern infrastructure. So far behind, no doubt about it. We used to lead the world. But I'm, I'm desperately committed to getting this done. So when I ask these questions, I'm not just trying to be, you know, make you feel better. I just really need to know down the line. I know we got to go. Yeah. I know Let's that. walk and talk. We I, have a little bit of a I'll be at the fourth, fourth stop, so I'll be able to okay. answer some of these Thank questions. You. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, you raise my microphone, okay. And we've also provided detailed information in terms of cost. distribution system here in the city of New Orleans. The total cost of both of these water towers was $40 million. FEMA funded. How much? $40 million for million. both water towers. FEMA funded. Yep. FEMA funded, which is very important. Yeah. Due to the, the financial predicament that we were in after Katrina, we could not have built these water towers without that. federal assistance. I was hearing that. Yeah. So we're, right now we're standing inside the support column for the, the Claiborne water tower. This water tower holds 2 million gallons of water in a tank 120 feet above us. Uh, now, 2 million gallons might sound like a lot of water, but it's only enough to supply the city of New Orleans for about 20 minutes. So the real value of this water tower isn't water storage. What this water tower does for us is helps maintain pressure in our distribution system when we have a power outage to the distribution pumps that provide water to the city. Prior to the 
these powers. Whenever we had a power outage at this plant, we would lose power to our distribution <laughs> what do we collect the money for? Water. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be here. And ma'am, Madam, Madam uh, Mayor, welcome back to the city of New Orleans. Mr. President, I uh, just want to show you, this is our Claiborne Avenue pumping station. Our executive director may have, in, may have indicated there were three phases of it. So here we're going to have two phases. One is the water purification. That's behind us where we generate, we can treat up to 136 million gallons of water a day. And, it's, and the third component is what you see right here. It's our pumping system. So, this, this Claiborne pumping station, and what we say is our new, our younger pumping station. This station was constructed in 1958. Our other uh, pumping station, and, and well, filter gallery, was in the 1920s. So we're going to focus here on our Claiborne pumping station. So what we're doing is modernizing our pumping station based upon the federal funding that we received uh, in the hazard mitigation program. And that's associated with our water, ham pro water hammer program. That overall program consists of three phases. Approximate value of $100, $100 million. Chad, that was in the water tower, maybe explain the first phase we completed with the water tower at a value of about $40 million. This is the second phase, right at $36 million. The third phase will kick off this summer to, to complete the $100 million phase, but the second phase is really pumps, systems, upgrading our old pumps from the 1950s. This is a, a new motor that's coming in, sir. We come in here. This is, we're using the casing of the existing motors from the 50s, retrofitted, lined it, but we're going to have new pump impellers in there. As you can see, there's new controls that we're going to go there. Up above you, there's new electrical systems. This will give us reliability, redundancy, and get us in that control for they automation. Look like the old pumps. Yes, sir, there are de definitely old pumps, beefy no, but old I understand pumps. I what you're doing now. I, I, I was wondering because I uh, did this in Newcastle County, Wilmington, where I'm from long time ago and that looked like the old anyway sorry that, no sir you're right that is the casing so what we're doing is we gutted the casing sandblasted it put a liner in it but we did did construct a new pump and pillar yeah, so but that's what that federal funding would do for us mm -hmm. reliability we're using that fund that we're using that funding wisely so and as you follow me we're going to go on the other half part of it is we can do one half at a time so we have the other half operational while we fix this and outside, you can't see, but over there, we're also been putting new valves, meters, slow control valves. We're putting new piping underneath the floor. So that's all part of that funding. So, so you can just follow me, watch your step, and take oh, your well. time. Yes, sir. Putting in more redundancy than we've had in decades. You can see that. Right here for me. And this is Kate Rich Kimmerich setting up our power modernization. Hey, Kayla, how are you? Oh, very good to meet you. Welcome, Mr. President, Madam Mayor. Thank you. We are so pleased to have you here in our powerhouse. More specifically, we are standing in our boiler room. What we do here is we make the steam needed to turn our turbines, which power our pumps, for the drinking water and the storm water, which I know you've already heard about. So those pumps and these facilities were originally installed in the early 1900s. So that means that they use of 25 Hertz power, and so for well over 100 years, we have been continuously making our own power that we need to run our pumps and our system. So standing here behind me are three of our six boilers, and we call this the new side of the house because it was installed in the late, the late 1940s. So of course, there have been some upgrades and some improvements since that time. We no longer burn coal. We burn natural gas, and um, but unfortunately, these facilities just aren't as efficient and uh, safe as they once were. So, through our power master plan, we have elected to change our operating model from generating our own power to purchasing power directly from the electric transmission grid, which is more reliable. 
In addition to that, we would have a fully redundant backup power plant with more modern, robust, and reliable equipment. So it is our vision that within the next five years, these facilities here will no longer be needed. We will retrain all of our staff to operate the new system. We will have significantly cut down our carbon emissions, and we will have made a better working condition for all of our